We seem to have the whole of Drumbury to ourselves today. I can't quite work out why there was seven bo six boats in yesterday and just us today. Was it something we said? <laughs> It was the start of the 2018 sailing season and after spending a few weekends and a few holiday days prepping the boat, polishing, painting and doing all the maintenance that can only be done on the hard, we were finally ready for the launch day. Having a boat that weighs 9.9 .9 tonnes lifted in the boat lift is always a nerve wracking experience. But the guys at Ardoran made it look easy, they know what they were doing, the boat's been in the yard for several years and everything pretty much went without hitch. Still, I was glad to see her in the water and floating, and on her mooring, and just couldn't wait to get out there and do all the jobs that can only be done once she's launched, like bending on sails. After we'd finished the day, we then took in a beautiful sunset and looked forward to what was hopefully going to be a classic season. season, leaving Loch Fekin in about 9.55. Perfect conditions for a first trip. Although conditions were perfect, we were feeling a bit rusty, so had to take special care navigating our way out of Loch Fekin, which is marked by some fairly tightly spaced buoys. There can be quite strong currents in the entrance to Loch Fekin, but at high slack water we didn't have any problems making our exit. The payback was there's absolutely beautiful entrance to Loch Fierkin, and it's a very short hop to the Isle of Mull and Loch Spell, which makes perfect destination for a shakedown trial. After a successful sea trial, our next journey was in May and took us up the Sound of Moor, up to Tilbmory and then on to Loch Drumbuie. Yeah, one expected sail at the end of the day, after a day of rain and hiding in Tilbmory. We're uh, rounding Orleston Point, heading for Loch Drumbuie, with uh, about 20 knots of wind on the tail. Um, just actually easy enough as we go around the point. Which is ideal. Heading for Lockdown View, which I think is coming into view any second now. It's been a fabulous day. But tell us about the weather at well, the beginning of the day. It start, I, was, I almost said, oh, hold off, because it's just bucketing down. And let's go later. And if we'd done that, we might not have gone at all. But despite the uh, the slight downpour. We went anyway. Then went for a bit of a well, slightly wet wander. It's up through the trees, right round Loch Drumbuie. Good track, isn't there? Oh, it's yeah. From from this, we never used this anchorage before. But I guess we're in what the southeast corner. Yeah, really pretty little corner. 
lovely anchorage, an easy landing on the beach, and then really good path to walk on Andover track uh, that takes you up right round to the cliffs just above, yeah, above Loch and it's stunning. A few showers on and off, and then we walked a bit further round to um, above Orliston Point. Mm. Um, so that we could get a forecast and get a signal reception on the phone. What's the estate called? Is it the Drumlin Estate? Drumlin Estate, I think, yeah. Yeah, we nearly got as far as Drumlin. Yeah. Um, so it's about, from here to get a 4G mobile signal, about, what, four or five miles? Yeah. Felt like 20, didn't it? <laughs> uh, but it's actually quite a good track. Yeah. Yeah, that bridge was a bit exciting news. though. Yeah, the bridge was, yeah, a bit sort of Indiana Jones. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, lovely, all the same, very pretty. And the woodland's just gorgeous looking down to the loch. Mm. And bit by bit, all the boats have gone, and there's just us. And then we came back, and we were just sitting, chilling out, and the sun was coming out on the beach, thinking about rowing ashore. And this kayak comes round the headland and we're thinking, well, there's no other boats and where have they come from? And they can't have come through the narrows because the tide's too low. And they landed and came and said hello. And would we like to come home for a cup of tea with them? Yeah. <laughs> and we were parked in their front garden, basically. Sally yeah. and... Sally and Nick. And Nick, who were very hospitable. Ah. I like the way they just turned up just as we were sitting on the beach yeah. and asked us, turned up in a kayak uh, and asked us if we wanted a cup of tea. Yeah, which given I'd just walked 10 miles was very welcome. Extremely welcome, mm. yeah. I was gasping. We'll find out a little bit more about this little sort of spot that we've been coming to for years. Oh, it was lovely to hear about what it's like as a place to live. With a water turbine ah. and solar panels and an Airbnb that you Air can B &B. only get to by boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't really bring a car here, would you? No. Difficult enough walking. Yeah. We seem to have the whole of Drumbury to ourselves today. I can't quite work out why there was seven boats, six boats in yesterday. And just us today. Was it something we said? <laughs> home again, home again. Is that cuckoo again? Very cuckoo. Tomorrow I could quite happily either do a bit of kayaking or row ashore in the dinghy and then I'd love to go back up to the bridge and then head up by the deer tracks because it's like it looks like something out of Jurassic Park. Those amazing cliffs mm. at the at the top of that little valley and and the waterfall. It just looks like the land mm. that time forgot. And going the other way, I would love oh, to yeah. walk down to Dorlin. Yeah. Um, and Sally said it's only about a mile down there, and it sounds like a lovely track. And maybe along a little bit further to look over Loch Ticus. Yeah. So yeah, I am. I thought I would want to be disappearing off around the west side of Mal or out to the Outer Hebrides or heading up to the Summer Isles or you know new territory. But actually, it just shows you right on your doorstep you've got some of the most stunningly fabulous places to explore. Mm. I think it's time to try that beer yeah. and maybe make a curry. Good speak. After a few days exploring Loch Drumbuey, we headed back to Tilbermory. There we sheltered from a storm and did some provisioning before heading out through the north entrance of the Sound of Mull. What are you doing? 
It's a bit more like it, a change from the Gale Force winds. Ah. Um, Rouve Nagal Lighthouse, just north of Tobermory, on our way out through the uh, north entrance of the Sound of Mall. Very pretty. Where are we going to go? Oh, I don't know. Could be the Western Mall, could be the North Mall, could be our own Arden Merkin. Well, I'm very much in half a dozen mines, and a lot of it depends on what the sea state's like. Yeah, the Met Office is very pessimistic about the sea state. But well, I can see why. It's rather lovely at the moment. Yeah. Well, mm. we'll find out, won't we? At the moment, it's smooth, as you say. Slight? No, slight. Slight. Yeah. Slight, but we've got. A, we're on a downwind sailing. Very gentle three knots. Mmm. Very nice too. It's 7.49 and we had a very early start so I'm wondering whether it might be time for breakfast underway. <laughs> that was the really important thing, yes. But you're going to do just toast or you're going to do the full fry up? Oh, you know, we could. We've actually got the stuff in, haven't we? Yeah. Uh, since we've been to the flesh pots at Tove and stocked up somewhat. <laughs> It turns out that the best place to go with the wind was the Isle of Rum in the Small Isles. Who would have thought that after yesterday's 30 odd mile an hour winds that was battering us to death. Quite good really, good sail over. The, it's calm there now but the waves were high, what, two or three metres do you think? Oh at least. Um, I think I think they were, they were big as big. they were, they were 20 metres high. Yeah, but they were very long so they were actually not unpleasant at all. Uh, well, a bit, a bit difficult to stand up but other than that it wasn't difficult to make way. So we've been downwind sailing all the way and uh, we're just getting past the mountains of Rum uh, and we're going to lock, we're going to go into lock scree sort to anchor tonight assuming that uh, there isn't any swell in there which is a lot, an east facing lock that's um, about, about a mile and a half away. On the nose at the moment is the coolings of sky uh, and on the beam is the cooling of rum. And it's turning out to be a much better day than I expected. We've got rum over there, we've got egg over there, we've got the coolings of sky over there, and they've still got snow on them. We've got the Five Sisters of Kintail somewhere over there. It's just absolutely brilliant visibility, and it's been an amazing sail over. We've sailed nearly all the way, and yeah, it's been really good. Yesterday we had really strong winds. We had. Uh, yeah, Gale Force 8 in Tobermory we were getting gusts in my 30s and so yesterday was a bit of a write-off but um, we, uh, yeah, after hiding in Tobermory with the strong winds we came out today in really nice light kind of force 3, force 4 winds um, but the sea state's been quite high it was quite still in the sand and mole well not still, but it's quite slight in the, in the sand and mole um, but then as soon as we got out of the shelter of Mall, the, uh, the rollers coming in were absolutely massive. Not kind of, not kind of big waves, but just enormous swell, at least three metres, probably more. You kind of, when you went into the troughs, you'd look across and you'd think, where's the island's gone? And you, you, your, whole, your whole skyscape would disappear in the troughs. And yeah, really dramatic and then a bit challenging when the wind drops because then you'd just be bouncing about yeah, with the swell. But yeah, most of the time, yeah, it's 
we're actually done as proud. We're heading into Locks Greesort. Um, and yeah, we should get good shelter there, we're hoping. The wind's got a bit of easterly in it, so we'll have a look and see if it works because yeah, Screesort is open to the east. Um, but yeah, it, it should swing around a bit more to the south tonight. So yeah, it should hopefully be a comfortable, nice anchor. And it's really good for anchoring depths in like Screesort. Um, yeah, we haven't been here for a bit, so it'll make a nice change. Right, where do you think we should anchor? We are exploring the wild interior of the Isle of Rump and we're doing it by bike and some of the tracks are a bit a bit of a challenge on a Brompton but we're doing all right um, but yeah we're trying to get to Kilmory Bay that's on the north coast of Rump and uh, it's a glorious sunny day and it doesn't it doesn't feel like the Isle of Rum that I've ever been to before. What you got there then? It's a stone crusher from when they were making the rocks. Bullocks? Well, I was only trying to be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean the Bullock family? Yeah. Yes, when they owned the estate from their time, yeah, when they were improving the, uh, the roads. What do you think of the spot? I think it's lovely. Got the cool as the sky behind you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't ever remember seeing them so, so clear without, without clouds on the top. Well, I think we've got here. That's amazing. This would be a good place to have those sandwiches to you. Mm. you packed in my bag. 